Welcome back, kiddos. This time, I'm going to be discussing the origin of the Malzahn Empire and its expansion leading up to the Gardens of the Moon book. This will contain very small spoilers, but none of it will affect the plot as this is all just very basic history. And I'm going to have it dumbed down a little bit extra because there's some twists that I'm not going to be covering in the video. However, if you would rather discover this through the reading, then this is your warning. My goal for this video is to consolidate separate information to create a general timeline of the Empire, which will help paint a better picture of the entire Malzahn Empire. I also feel like this will help reduce some confusion of Gardens of the Moon, since there's so much happening in that book. This is all information that will be found in the main series, the original ten books, and not from external novellas like the Path of Ascendancy series, which I know contains some contradictions. Our story starts out on the continent of Quan Tali, home to many warring city-states. I imagine it being similar to the classical age of Greece, as there are two major provinces who warred with each other, along with several smaller cities. In addition, Quan Tali was thought to have developed iron weapons a few hundred years earlier, marking a second similarity. The two major provinces were Quantali and Unta, and these smaller players were Gris, Khan, Itkokan, Nepan, and Kartul. With so many individual groups, it was fairly rare to have a full-out war, but battles were fairly common. Raiding groups were also fairly common, which allowed for prolific piracy groups stationed on the remote island of Malaz, which was under the control of the pirate king Mok. Mok ruled over Malaz city and the entire island for more than 20 years, amassing a large amount of wealth. His influence can be felt throughout the city, since Mok loved naming things after himself. Unta has finally decided that it's tired of territory battles and decides to go full-on expansionist, setting its eyes on the island of Kartul. The first step to achieve this goal was the annexation of the island kingdom of Nap, which caused a large exodus of Nepan refugees. Ever the opportunist, Pirate King Mok would sell captured refugees to Unta for some easy money. Roughly at the same time, there was a coup on Kartul, and Tashrin was ousted as the Demidrek of the Drek cult, which ruled the island. In the midst of all this chaos, enter a humble bar owner and his sneaky friend, Kelenved and Dancer. Smiley's is an unassuming tavern in the Mouse Quarter of Mala City, and it also operates as a front for Kelenved and Dancer's criminal organization. The two already employed a young man named Dujik, but quickly grew their small criminal family with some of the Nippon refugees who were hiding out on the island. First among these are Nock, Hall, and Amaron. During this time, two major factors gave Kelenved and Dancer a huge advantage. First, they were able to use the Dead House, which is an Azoth house in Mala City, as a base of operations, and it is virtually unassailable. Secondly, Kellenvid and Dancer dug into a well on the Mock family's estate and used that to break in and rob his fortune, using it to fund their early criminal activities. This served to weaken the Pirate King as well as bolster Kellenvid's family. This family continued to grow, adding in the brothers of Urko and Carthron Crust, a barmaid turned assassin named Surly, a Dalhanese sword fighter named Asim Ultor, and the previously mentioned High Mage Tashrin. Using this crew, Kelenved then overthrew Mok and proclaimed himself as ruler of Mal's island. Next, he started gathering and forming some true armies, and set his sights on Unta. Getting troops ends up being very easy, since there are so many Nippon refugees wanting vengeance against Unta, so they make up the majority of the Malzan military might at the beginning. Kelenved led the battle against the Untan army, and his tactics caused them to win the day. The Nepan were very happy, having liberated their homeland, but then had Kelenved proclaim the birth of the Malazan Empire and move the capital to Unta. A secondary campaign had quickly knocked out Quantali, bringing their kingdom into the fold. 
I suppose now that most of the family is in place, I should explain a little bit about the important ones. Kalanved is a Dalhunese man and a powerful mage of the Mianus Warren. He is very intelligent, possibly even bordering on insane, and he greatly enjoyed tricking others. To go along with that, he made himself appear much older and played up the affectations in his voice to seem partially mad. Despite these games, he had a surprisingly progressive approach to running an empire, focusing on improving the lives and safety of the poor while securing trade routes and expanding his territory. Dancer was the chief advisor and personal friend of Emperor Kelenved. He's the only man who was kept in on all of Kelenved's plans, and the two worked together as a pair of equals, rather than master and servant. As an accomplished and efficient assassin, he created the Talon, an order of assassins that were utilized offensively as a branch of the military. Nock is a member of the original family that Kelenved formed. He is a Nepan and a notable ship commander, so he was put in charge of the original fleet that was created, which was really only just a few pirate ships, but it would get a lot bigger very soon. Tall and severe, he was renowned for being extremely taciturn and was always accompanied by his signature sealskin cloak. Surly the barmaid had a past that she kept hidden while being a refugee. It turns out she was a member of the royal line of Nippon, and she also dabbled in being an assassin as well. She created another order of assassin called the Claw, and ruled as Claw Master. Where the Talon were focused on external threats, the Claw tended to take on internal threats, effectively acting as a secret police. Urko and Cartharon Crust are two Nippon brothers that joined along with Surly. Due to the timing and Surly's hidden identity, I believe that they were bodyguards. Both of the men were large, however Urko was especially beastly. They both ended up becoming naval commanders and later admirals along with Nock. Dasim Ultor is an amazing sword fighter from the Dalhon Savanna. After the fall of Unta and Quantali, he gets named the first sword of the Malzan Empire and is given supreme command of the military. He is a charismatic leader and develops the Malzan military doctrine that made their armies so dangerous. It involved open communication of soldiers, allowing them to argue and think for themselves instead of only blindly following orders. Additionally, he led from the front in battle choosing to participate instead of remaining toward the rear and issue commands. As such, he had elite bodyguards named Dasim's First Sword, and each was named after a different part of the sword. Now that that's out of the way, let's get back to Quantali. Quickly following the conquest of Unta, Kelenved discovered and claimed something called the First Throne, which allowed him to command the Logros clan of the Talanimas. As you may think, having a large undead army that can form from dust is a huge advantage and would be incredibly terrifying to use in human conflict. Thankfully, though, Kelenved used them very sparingly and never in just open combat. The Talon Bonecasters are used along with the Malzan Mages to bring Kartul into the fold, and the battle there had huge magical conflagrations. Besides that, most of Quantali fell relatively easily. One of the big reasons is that the Malzan Empire used professional armies with extensive training and discipline in battle, whereas their enemies are mostly conscripted armies tending to fight in a tribal fashion rather than disciplined blocks. At some point here, Kelenved picks out a soldier from one of the armies and has him trained to be the Imperial Historian. Duker is the man who Kelenved selected a Dalhonese man who couldn't even read or write. Duker was trained to read and write in Unta before rejoining the First Army as Imperial Historian. He was also the last known addition to Kelenved's family, and Kelenved specifically wanted him to write things exactly as they happened, without any fluff. So, the last real holdouts on Quantali are Liheng with its massive walls, the Wiccan Plains, which are just relatively to the north, and a mercenary group led by Prince Kaz Devor. Li Heng is taken down in a coordinated effort between the Assassins and the Talanamas. The Assassins infiltrated the city, killing nobles and royals, 
and the Tlanimas negated the defenses of the walls by forming from dust at the top. Prince Kaz was cornered, and rather than fight to the death, they decided to retreat from the continent to Stratum in the southeast. But before they left, he and his troops swore a vow to destroy the Malzan Empire and restore Prince Kaz to the throne of Unta. This vow created the Crimson Guard, giving them many powers similar to the Talon. The Wiccans were made up of many clans, and the war efforts were led by Coltane of the Crow Clan. He was a stoic but talented commander, and his Wiccans seemed in awe of him. Their attempt against the Empire ultimately failed, with Kelenved shaming them for their own infighting among the clans. The shaming served to truly unite the clans, and Kelenved earned the respect of the Wiccans and Coltane, who swore loyalty to the Empire, becoming a fist in the military. Real quick, by the way, a fist is just basically a general commander in the army, and a high fist is someone who is actually in charge of the army, like a general. With this, the Empire controlled mainland Quantali, and they spent time building infrastructure, commissioning more armies, and building several fleets. Kelenved and Dancer become much more reclusive, spending time exploring realms in the Azoth House, sometimes being gone for years. The Empire did not stay dormant for long, and tried expanding out in nearly all directions. To the west was the incredibly powerful kingdom of Shal Morzin, and Kelenved took one look at them and said no thank you, and left. The first expedition to Coral in the southeast was defeated by the Crimson Guard, who would stay a thorn in the side of the Malzans on all continents. This didn't fully stop the Malazans, though, and more troops were sent later, with a campaign under High Fist Greymane. To the north, the Falari Isles were taken during a long campaign, and another fleet made its way around that to, uh, farther north to the subcontinent of Seven Cities, which were named after its Seven Holy Cities. Kind of a straightforward name. The southernmost city, Aaron, was the first to fall. Even though there were many city-states and large tribes, seven cities fell to the Malzans very quickly, the entire conquest only taking a few years. Each holy city was led by a holy Falad, which was basically just the seven cities' name for a king. Additionally, each Falad had a champion called the Holy Protector. You see, Seven Cities is one of the oldest regions for humanity, and they greatly enjoyed their high claims of holiness though in truth, the system they had was despotic and their power had been decaying for some time, especially since they refused to work together. Thus, the Malazans essentially swept through the subcontinent, defeating tribes and cities individually. To be clear, I am not saying that the conquest was easy. In fact, most of the battles were incredibly bloody. But the Seven Cities natives were not prepared to fight in large-scale war the same way that the Malazans were. With the conquest of seven cities, the Malazans also claimed multiple islands to the north and east of the subcontinent, which includes both Sepik and Otaderal Island. Otaderal Island is named after the metallic, rust-like substance called Otaderal. Yeah, obvious, I know. <laughs> this Otaderal has the amazing property of deadening magic. Being near a large amount of the substance will completely negate a mage, and sometimes protects from incoming magical attacks. Kelenved orders the setup of several mines and uses them as a place to severely punish criminals, political enemies, and rogue mages, the latter of which would eventually be driven insane by close proximity to Ot Otaderal. The mining and access to this ore was highly regulated by the Empire, and it served to greatly empower certain individuals. This is where I'm going to end the first video with having the Malzan Empire fully controlling Quantali, having control of Falar, Seven Cities, and attempts into Coral. Up next, we will be taking a look at the further expansion of the Malzan Empire, including how they may be going a little bit too far. But with that, thank you for listening. If you have any thoughts or comments, or an idea for another video or something you want to hear about, please feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll try to answer it for you. Hope you all have a good day.